For this video, I'll be covering transcription in prokaryotes. The first stage of transcription is initiation. In order for mRNA to be produced, transcription must begin at the promoter region of the DNA and between the blue spots on both strands of DNA that I've depicted here. We can see that the top strand goes from 5' to 3' prime, and the bottom strand goes from 3' prime to 5' prime direction. In the promoter region, there are two important sequences, known as consensus sequences. One is known as the negative 10 box and can be identified by, the, by its characteristic of having repeating TNA base pairs, known as the tata box. Upstream from this sequence is the minus 35 region. Because the core RNA polymerase molecule cannot recognize and bind to these sequences, a molecule known as sigma is able to first recognize the two sequences and then recruit RNA polymerase to bind to it at the plus one start site. The core RNA polymerase and the sigma molecule bounded together is known as a hollow enzyme. If the minus 10 box were deleted, sigma would not be able to recognize a site to bind to in the promoter region and would not be able to recruit RNA polymerase, therefore preventing the transcription from occurring, which would mean that the sugar could not be produced. The next step is initiation. In order to get core polymerase onto the start site of transcription, the strands must be unwound to form a transcription bubble, as shown here. Because we know that mRNA is made in the 5' to 3' prime direction, we can deduce that the bottom strand must be template the template strand for mRNA, since in order for RNTPs to be added in the 5' to 3' prime direction, it must be read in the 3 to 5 direction, which matches the bottom strand. This makes the top strand the coding strand. The next stage of transcription is elongation. The sigma factor is removed in order for RNA polymerase to proceed down the DNA strand in a 5 to 3 direction, synthesizing mRNA along the way by creating phosphodiester bonds. Nucleotides will be added in the, to the 3' prime end of RNA, as shown here. Note that the RNA strand is identical to the coding strand, except for having a uracil in place of thymine. Finally, in termination, there are two ways to terminate transcription, row protein dependent and row protein independent. In the independent form, the RNA polymerase arrives at a region rich in C and G nucleosides, as shown here, with orange Cs and pink Gs. We see that these sequences are inverted sequences that can cause the mRNA product to fold into itself and create a hairpin molecule. This hairpin structure is followed by a string of repeating adenine bases, known as a poly-A tail. These adenine bases code for uracil on the mRNA, and since adenine and uracil bases form weak bonds with each other, the mRNA molecule can easily remove itself from the DNA molecule. In row-dependent in row termination, a protein known as rho, represented by the black molecule on the red RNA strand, binds to a row binding site on an mRNA sequence and slides towards the 3' prime end of the RNA strand. When RNA polymerase, represented by the purple molecule, stops at the termination hairpin, the rho protein initiates its helicase activity to cause the DNA and RNA strands to unwind, thereby ending transcription.